everyone. Welcome to today's episode where we are going to talk about homeowner's insurance. Now, I know that that's not one of the sexiest topics when it comes to real estate, but it is something that you need to be aware of. If you're a buyer, it's a very, very important for you to be aware. And if you're a seller, all insurance companies are not created equal. And it seems to be that we are having a lot of surprises when it comes to people's homeowner's insurance. So a um, couple of things that you need to be aware of and that you need to um, investigate is number one is you need to not necessarily use the insurance company that you've always used or that your family has always used. You need to see what is actually covered and what is a portion or what is what is going to be covered in that binder that you have. So what I'm talking about is you may have just your standard homeowner's insurance where if there's high winds, your roof gets blown off. But the problem is, is you may not have a rider in there about water damage. And so when the roof gets blown off and then everything inside is damaged because of the water, it may not be covered. Now, I am no insurance expert, so please do not come at me if I'm getting that wrong, but it is something that you need to be aware of. We are seeing things like this happen uh, with insurance companies. I personally have had a couple of major hiccups on some of our properties lately. Uh, one, even though I did a video about a year ago telling people to increase their insurance coverage, I had failed to do that. Oh, yep, on one of our rentals, and unfortunately, it burned down, and the um, amount that we were given was very sad and, and not near what we needed. So make sure that you are actually taking my advice. <laughs> and yes, I did go back, and we have had that conversation on our other properties with our insurance coverage. Um, so it's really important to not just assume that it's all taken care of or assume that the way you've always done it is the way you should be doing it. This is something that you need to be proactive about. You need to educate yourself. And here's the thing that I found, guys. Even in this instance where we had a major fail and, and basically lost money, the, the issue was on us, not on the insurance agent. Because when we do take the time and call, they are very happy to stay on the phone with us and educate us and give us all of the information. The problem that I find is that things are happening so fast that a lot of times we as homeowners, borrowers, investors fail to actually ask the correct question. So don't make it about the insurance failing you. Make it about did you educate yourself so that you know where you're at with, with the insurance and what is going to be covered. Now, something that you're probably not aware of, um, and Jill's like, I can't believe you're going to tell them this, but um, the interesting thing is that when you start researching insurance in Oklahoma, um, there are the top five highest states for homeowners insurance. Now, I think all of you are going to guess that the number one state is Florida. Why? Well, their hurricanes are probably their number one reason why, and sharks. Do you think the sharks have? Okay, maybe the sharks don't have anything to do with insurance, but uh, homeowners insurance, that is. So number one, the most expensive state is Florida for homeowners insurance, and they are actually seeing where some insurance companies are pulling out of Florida and refusing to, to insure there, and that's causing a major problem because when you go from, you know, 100 companies that are offering insurance down to five companies that are offering insurance, the cost is going to go up substantially, which then, um, even though the price of the homes may not be changing significantly, that is a fee that, that is included in your monthly payment for your home. And so it can actually make it where you can't afford the home that you want to purchase because the insurance is so high. Um, number two, the second highest insurance, and I would have never guessed this one, Louisiana. Hmm? Hurricanes. hurricanes, again, hurricanes. So same situation, the wind and the water, what is covered, what isn't. So Florida number one, Louisiana number two, 
Number three, the most expensive state for insurance in the U.S. is Oklahoma. I would not have thought we were even in the top 10, but we're in the top three. Ah, so this is why we're having this conversation today is that just because you can afford your house payment, the principal, can you, in, in, can you afford the insurance and the taxes? So that's a very, very important process to make sure that you're aware of. When you're playing with the mor mortgage calculator online, and it's telling you this is what your monthly payment would be, you need to verify if it's also sharing your taxes and insurance and if those numbers are actually accurate for our area. Because again, we're number three in the state, or in the, in the state, we're number three in the US. Now, number four is Texas. And I think that that is a combination of they're just so huge and they have hurricanes um, <laughs> that the cost is exorbitant. And then number five, this one I would have not have, not have guessed, Mississippi. I think I would have said California. Jill, mm -hmm. did you think California would be? Yeah. yeah. It's by the water. Not even in I the top five. Fall off the cliff. I would. <laughs> Do they even cover your house if it falls off a cliff? <laughs> That's a whole different rider, right? So, so yeah, believe it or not, um, Oklahoma being in the top five, number three for um, homeowners insurance, I thought that it was very, very important that we have this conversation. We do have a fair amount of buyers moving in from out of state who are sometimes really, really surprised by that. Now, the flip side of that, is, but our taxes kind of make up for it. Our taxes are significantly lower than any of these states, so no worries there. So yes, the insurance is going to be more, but make sure that you understand what you're paying for and what you're actually getting. Because believe me, you don't wanna be in a situation where we were, where we had owned this home for about eight years and had purchased it at a very low amount, had rehabbed it, had rented it out, and when it burned down, the amount of coverage was very, very sad. <laughs> so we, we were not covered. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I told Jill I won't cry on this. <laughs> I happen to re, rehash this issue. Um, and again, the frustrating thing is, as I told you guys over a year ago, go back and have these conversations. And I did for my personal home, but I failed to do it for a few of the rentals. So make sure that you don't fall into that same category. Again, as a property owner, whether you are a first-time buyer, whether you own um, several homes as an investor, um, or if you've just lived in your home you know, for a number of years, it is an obligation and a responsibility as a homeowner to know what is covered in your insurance and do you need to increase that? Because guys, you don't wanna be on the flip side where something goes wrong and then you find out that these things are not covered. So. That is, that felt more preachy today than normal. So Jill says that's okay. So I'm going to leave it at that. So as always, guys, if you have any specific real estate questions, that's what we're here for. Please reach out. We'd be happy to have that conversation and possibly even do an episode on it. As always, please like, follow, and share. And thanks for watching.